Shalom, wonderful people of God. Whoa, this is another beautiful day. Um, you're welcome to TLO's Daily Dosage. Yesterday we began, but yesterday was introduction. Today we are going to look at something beautifully. Um, without much ado, I want us to go straight to the point. All right. Today we want to look at the experience of Adam in deep sleep. The experience of Adam in deep sleep, that is to say, was Adam asleep or awake when Eve was being made? Was Adam asleep or was he awake when Eve was being made? You know, it is because I've had many ministers, you know, great theologians, and they are ministering and they are saying that, you know, um, when God was making Eve, Adam was not aware. And so they use this revelation to explain the fact that women are complicated to men in the sense that women were made in the state of unconsciousness of men. Or when men were in an unconscious state, when men were not aware, that was when when women were made. That was when Eve was made. And so they use this to explain the fact that you know, as a man, you don't need and you can't understand women, you know. In as much as it sounds sensible and it sounds, you know, um, revelational, please, it is not truthful. It is not true. And I want us to understand that when God was making Eve, Adam was aware. Now, Bible says that God, he put Adam into a deep sleep. All right, and I want us to read in Genesis chapter 2, verse the verse number 21. It says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Now, that was the first time the word deep sleep was used. Or let me say the first time the word sleep was used. All right, he said, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead of thereof right and the, 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 the verse 22 says and the rib which the lord god had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man look at what adam said he said this is flesh of my flesh and this is bone of my bone now i want you to understand that adam could not have made that declaration adam could not have made that confession if adam was not aware of eve's makeup because the scriptures make us understand now jesus said in John 3, Jesus makes a profound statement and he said that we, we, we speak of what we know and testify of what we have seen. We speak of what we know and we testify of what we have seen. Now, Adam could not have testified of the, the essence of Eve if Adam was not actually aware of who Eve was. You cannot declare something until the knowledge of it has come unto you. So we say we speak what we know and testify of what we have seen. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, in the book of Acts, the apostle said, he said, we cannot by speak the things which we have heard and seen. We cannot by but speak the things which we have heard and seen. In the book of um, First John, he says that which we have heard, which we have seen, which our hands have handled concerning the word of the word of life, declare we unto you. So we are only declaring the things that we have had fellowship with. You can never say things that you don't know. We don't say the things we don't know. We can't declare things we have no fellowship with. Do you understand that? Now, you should understand that if Adam was able to speak and say, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, then it meant that in the making of this, Adam was there. That is to say that the spirit soul of Adam was in operation. Now, you should understand, okay, that spirits don't sleep. 
That is one thing you should know. Spirits don't sleep. If God made Adam in his own image, you should understand that God made Adam in a form where he would not sleep because spirits don't sleep. Angels don't sleep. Demons don't sleep. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So then, Adam in his perfect state right after he was being made, there was no possible way that his spirit could have slept because he had not fallen. You let us even say that uh, if a man is falling, his spirit sleeps. Adam had not fallen by then. He was in his state of perfection. He was brand new. He, he had not fallen, so he was, he was fresh and perfect. And then God caused him to fall into a deep sleep. You must understand that when God was causing Adam to fall into a deep sleep, what was happening was the body of Adam. It was the body of Adam that actually went to sleep, not the spirit soul of Adam. No. So, taking us to um, Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, the verse number 2, it says, I are asleep, but my heart waketh then it said it is the voice of my beloved knocking you understand the man the preacher is making us understand that he is asleep though his body is asleep his heart is awake now what is the heart the heart is the amalgamation of the spirit and the soul when the spirit and the soul intermingle when they come together they form the heart so what the man of god tried to say what he was trying to tell us is that though his body was resting his soul and his spirit were awake Now, then it says that it is the voice of my beloved knocking. Now, this is how dreams work. This, it is on this principle that dreams come about. Remember, God does not speak to us when we are asleep. God, he speaks to us when we are awake. God speaks to us when we are awake, not when we are asleep. God will minister to you only when you are sober. So you realize that scripture always keeps instructing us to be sober. Scripture always tells us to be awake. Scripture tells us to be vigilant. Make sure that your eyes are opened. And the opening of these eyes are not the eyes of the physical body. They are the eyes of the soul and the eyes of the spirit. So if we are being told to be vigilant, that means that at all points in time, we are supposed to have this, the, our soul's eye, our spirit's eye, awake and seen, even when our body is resting. So then, if God is telling Adam to be sober and to be vigilant, if God is telling us to be awake, then I'm not sure it is biblically incorrect to say that Adam's soul and his spirit could not were not aware when God was making Eve. It is wrong to say that. All right. So God actually speaks to us when we are awake. God does not speak to us when we are asleep. What does it mean? That means that anytime I go to bed, I can only dream when I'm awake, not when I'm asleep. Do you understand that? So, in as much as the body has been put to sleep, the spirit and the soul must be awake. Only then will I hear when God speaks. Only then will I hear. That was the same thing that happened with Adam. That was the same thing that happened with Adam. Adam was not asleep. But Adam was asleep. In the sleep of Adam, he was awake. Beautiful. It is only then that God can actually cause us to see those revelations he wants to show to us. It's only then that when we wake up, you realize that when a man wakes up from sleep, the first things that he thinks about are the dreams he had, especially when you're very sensitive. You wake up and watch, you pick your pen and your, your, your book and you want to write down the dreams exactly. The things you see when you sleep, when you wake up, they're the first things that come in mind. That is how it's supposed to happen. And you quickly write them down. That is what the moment Adam woke up from sleep, he remembered the dream he had. And the dream he had was the woman he saw. Hallelujah. Beautifully. Now, I I just wanted to explain this mystery because this is how we are going to explain dreams. This is how we are going to explain dreams. 
So in our journey to studying about dreams, you must understand the first thing you should know is that God only speaks to a man when he is awake and not when he's asleep. I believe this has been a blessing unto you. And if you have any questions, forward it to the light of Christ and we would answer you. But I believe this has settled deep. Tomorrow we will continue. We will look at deep sleep and we will look at the spirit of deep sleep as we said in the introductory message. And I believe that by the time we are done with this this sermon on dreams, you would really, really appreciate your dreams and you would even know how to position yourself for dreams. Wonderful. God bless you so much for giving ears to these wonderful words. God bless you. Shalom. See you tomorrow. Peace. Bye.